Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Shiva Tankamani, an Integration Technical Architect. As you know, for the past few days we have been visiting different integration design patterns and we are also seeing the relative uh, use case and its uh, demo. So in that series, we are going to see idempotent receiver today. Let's take a look. Now let's see what idempotent receiver uh, is trying to solve. I mean, we will see the problem and the solution. So uh, when the application or the customer is initiating the identical request, say uh, the customer is working on the online order uh, uh, without any particular intention, he is uh, unsure that whether the request is already submitted or not. So as a result, he is clicking the button more than once and double, to double check the request is submitted successfully. But uh, uh, from the application point of view, the same request has been submitted redundantly multiple times. So that's the problem. So the solution is uh, application is not breaking or accepting um, same request multiple times and uh, processes uh, redundantly. So in order to avoid that, the application is uh, uh, successfully able to sustain customer's behavior and identifies the duplicate request by some means. We are going to see how. So after identifying whether this uh, duplicate request or not, uh, the application will respond suitably with a user-friendly message. So this is a problem we are going to address. We, are, we will see that diagrammatically. So we have a sender, say let's say it's an online order or it could be any system or when the new employee is created, the application is submitting the same employee details multiple times. And uh, you can see here there are uh, several messages or uh, several transactions that already took place, including one and two. But you see here uh, uh, the order number two has been or is, is attempted to submit again to the application B. So or this could be order fulfillment system. So uh, we don't need to fulfill the same order twice. So the application has to have some mechanism to identify whether this uh, order is uh, fulfilled already or the order is received already and then decide uh, the order has to be fulfilled or uh, it has to be rejected with a suitable message indicating that it has been already processed successfully. So uh, that is the design pattern, uh, the problem and the solution uh, all about. So let's get started with the demo. Before we start with the demo, let's see the use case that we are going to design for this uh, problem and then we will see the solution to address it. So the use case is the user uh, logs into the uh, online order system uh, and uh, he chooses all the items that he likes to buy and finally he adds to the cart and then he is uh, submitting his uh, final order. So but uh, he is unsure whether uh, he has submitted or not or the UI is uh, uh, not designed so effectively and uh, he couldn't decide whether he has already submitted or clicked the button or not. So he is clicking the same action twice or multiple times. So this is the input message that we, we are likely to receive. So we have an order, we have order ID and the type. Whether the order is being created or it's being updated is what is the order type and the customer details and items that he is buying and address. So these are the details that are coming from uh, online order system and we need to process it and we need to send it to the order fulfillment system. That is the purpose of ABA. So now we are going to design uh, the solution of uh, uh, so solution for the problem when customer uh, uh, or impatient customer submits the same request twice and how we are going to sustain it. Let's get started with the application. I have already created an application and I created a logger and started. And uh, now let's introduce a data weave uh, that provides the response uh, as is with the same request. So let's do transformation. And let's, let's use JSON. And let's say status, we are going to say success and we are going to say message your order is received successfully so this is a message that we are going to 
uh, provide back and this is the system and uh, we are using idempotent receiver uh, resource path and we are giving the same online order uh, data and we are giving the response as success so let's uh, now when we see when we click this uh, multiple times uh, the order is received successfully so this is likely to happen so uh, when the same order is submitted multiple times the application also behaves this way assuming that uh, we have uh, introduced uh, a database insert here so whatever uh, we give uh, the application either uh, creates a multiple orders in the backend system or it creates unwanted error and uh, uh, it's creating chaos so how do we avoid that so we have uh, 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 item potent message validator here so let's drag and drop and how this works or uh, we need to know how we are going to design this item potent message validator and based on which uh, we need to design uh, whether accept or reject or to find out the duplicate order so what we are going to do is we are going to decide on the uh, uh, key fields uh, particularly which are uh, likely to be unique for example order id customer id and the type of uh, um, transaction that he is making sometimes uh, we may create a new order say at that time uh, the order type will be create and once he uh, submits the order he might even make uh, updates like quantity can be increased or he can add more items so at that time the type will be updated so we are picking up this order id type and the customer id based on three these three combinations we are deciding whether uh, this order has been already processed or not so we need to have this information and then uh, choose item button message validator so unlike java jtv or dotnet application this is an integration tool where this uh, provides uh, uh, the support for these uh, integration design patterns already so it's just that we need to know how to use them effectively that's it that's the advantages of uh, mulesoft so we have to give id expression so before that uh, i am going to the metadata section and then i am going to add metadata which will be helpful in multiple uh, scenarios i am going to explain how so we will add let's say employee or let's say online order create and let's choose json let's choose uh, example and uh, we have demo let's choose all files we have employee json and we can choose order so it's always good to create uh, a metadata so that uh, when you are creating an expression it automatically helps us with the tooltip so let's go to the general section and in the id expression we are going to decide uh, what combination of fields uh, will be used for identifying the duplicate orders so we are going to say payload order dot order id and uh, not just order id because the same order id can be uh, given for update also so we are going to say payload dot order dot type you can note down type is given within the double quote because type is also used to, to understand and identify the type of data whether it is string or integer so it's automatically enclosing it within double quote which is good and then we are going to add uh, payload dot order dot customer dot customer id so these three fields together will identify whether uh, uh, the submitted message is uh, unique or redundant okay so then we need to have uh, i mean how uh, it works internally is it's not magic it doesn't work automatically but what it does is these key fields are stored uh, internally by using object store by mulesoft so we need to create it and it preserves uh, for a certain time duration and then finds out whether this combination is already there or not so let's create that and in order to create this um, 
there is a, a way so we can say um, object store let's say uh, let's drag and drop clear we are not going to do this clear but it will give you a provision to add the object store let's create the object store let's say online orders and let's say max entries is 100 it's always uh, important to give uh, max entries because uh, uh, if you decide to deploy this in the cloud hub uh, um, the memory size is determined based on the selected vcore size so it's always better to have the max entries whether it is 100 or 500 it's good to have it and time to live is four hours we are not going to i mean the user cannot submit the same request after four hours that's not likely to happen so let's say it's four hours and uh, save it you saved it now you can delete it uh, uh, safely because it would have created the um, global element already so let's go here and then now you can see it's none you can choose global reference global references online orders so this uh, object store is necessary mandatory uh, for Neulsoft to store and so that when the next time the request comes it goes and checks whether it has been already uh, uh, processed or not so uh, that is uh, that is a preparatory activity for this item button message validator let's uh, save this and we need to restart because we have created a new configuration now this is not going to work as is and then we need to do this exception handling when there is a, a duplicate message occurs that we are going to see later. Let's allow this to get started. It's deployed. Now let's go back. Let's uh, submit this order. It's successfully processed. Let's submit the same order a second time and you can see it results in error. So it says unknown description. We are not going to leave it like this. It's not the good practice, but I'm showing that it, it breaks the system. Now let's go back and see what happens. Now you can carefully go through the logs and then uh, the error type says mule dot duplicate message. But because uh, by since we introduced item potent uh, uh, message validator, it validates based on the cache that it's maintaining internally. So it uh, throws the error. So now we need to handle this error. How do we do that? So let's go to error. Let's go to uh, on error continue. Let's give it in the error handling section. And here we will first log. We have seen that there is always, uh, uh, it's a good practice to do the logging. And uh, let's say, duplicate order identified and let's say correlation ID so correlation ID is always uh, effective to track our transaction in the console log and it will be uh, helpful particularly for the uh, operations team and then we are going to form the transformation using data view and we are going to give uh, some user friendly message let's frame the message let's say json and uh, status we are going to say error and we are going to say message uh, duplicate order received with the details given below please verify so uh, then we are going to say uh, order and we are going to uh, mention what is the order that we are going to indicate that it already exists. So we will say id and uh, payload.order.id uh, and uh, we are going to give customer id as well. customer id payload dot 
payload dot order dot customer dot customer id and we are going to say type payload dot order dot type since it's a reserved word we need to give it uh, within the double quote it's always uh, best practice you can always uh, give it within the double quote it's an optional one always the fields that are available in json uh, can be given in double quote uh, uh, as a best practice if you want you can enforce this uh, as a team standard while doing the development but but it's optional it's your wish so libsy saved it and uh, and we need to do one more thing and uh, we have seen already that uh, we received this duplicate message so we will go to the error handling and then under the type we will specify that it's a duplicate message so this error handling is performed only when we receive the duplicate message so it's done and i think this issue we can ignore let's see I think the application is restarted. Let's try now. Now, when I try the second time, it uh, gives me beautiful JSON error message. It says error, duplicate order received with the details. Please verify. So ID is coming as null, but I think uh, we need to update that something. Payload.order.order ID, it should be. So we will give order ID both uh, uppercase, saved it. Now let's try again. Now you got all the details. So it, it just not only tells uh, that the duplicate order is received, but it also provides uh, and substantiate with the detail so that user can understand better. Now let's try with some other order number. Say, let's call it one, two, three, four, five, six, and the type is create. I mean, I'm creating the order for the first time, and uh, customer ID is uh, one, two, eight. Let's submit it. The order is successfully received, but now I am updating this order with uh, uh, update, and quantity instead of four, I am deciding to buy only two quantity, and uh, let's submit this. Now again the order is received because uh, the application will go ahead and sub, uh, update the existing order with the quantity. But if I do the same update second time and it says duplicate order, it gives the details like order ID, customer ID and the order type. 